Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gamey Daddy channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. For real, I do appreciate it. So, The Division 2 is on sale again for the nth time. This thing has been on sale so many times since it came out. And you know, it sent a lot of tremors around the community in the past. But I think right now, players are starting to see that these sales absolutely mean other things and I'll talk about it in this video so basically we got this game you know and then a few months down the road it kind of got a little bit of a sale then a few months down the road it got a little bit of a discount and then went back to original price and the prices have fluctuated over time and for the longest time we never necessarily understood as to why for some it was easily represented as oh the game is dying and the game is failing hence the price point being low but then I think after the sale that went out before the Warlords of New York DLC, which was a big, huge year two DLC that was released in March of 2020, it became apparent that these sales were designed to continue to bring players into the game, into the ecosystem of the Division 2. Now, at first, when that was, uh, you know, quite maybe I would say hypothesized, it still did not convince a lot of the community. Instead, it caused worry. And I can understand, you know, people love the cooperative aspect of this game where you can hit a matchmaking button and, you know, there are people that would jump into a mission with you, you know, people that you don't know but all have the same goals as you do. And that's always a fun thing to have in the Division. So, so that's basically where I know that most of that concern came from. But at the end of the day, I think it came to then serve that, oh, what the community, you know, basically needs is for an influx of players over time because we do have different kinds of players that play the game. We have those that will play the game for 3,000 hours. We have those that are going to play the game for just a few hundred hours, leave, come back. And so with those kinds of changes in the numbers, it's very important to continue to bring people into the ecosystem. And because this game is not tagged as a free to sale, you know, free to play game, it's very difficult for you to expect for players to just, you know, come in and pick the game up and incentives are very necessary. And so I think right now we're seeing another incentive, which I believe may be a way for the development team to be trying to at least, you know, appeal to more people out there in the gaming world. Now, this is something that is very unique about Ubisoft and their games as well. They do that all the time with their software sales. They'll discount their games in very short order even if the game is doing very well. I mean, in the past, we kind of, in a sense, have associated with the game going on sale quickly as the game not necessarily doing well. I mean, Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that did not release in the strongest point. Wherever you can find it to buy on different storefronts, you can get a discount depending on who you're buying it from. But if you also think about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it was actually one of the top sellers in Europe at the time of its release, believe it or not. But guess what? Now it's actually gone on a little bit of a sale. And even during the Christmas, Epic Games was given a little bit of a discount and also, in a sense, discounting the game. Also, Immortals Phoenix Rising is a game that also seems to, you know, have some level of a following. I mean, I'm not saying it did as well as Valhalla. But as well, it's also getting in its own right uh, slightly uh, of a discount. But at the end of the day, I think the math actually does work for these kinds of digital sales. So let me go ahead and see if we can put kind of a business perspective on this whole thing to understand why many development teams will, in a sense, discount their games. So on release of your game. I think is the very best time in order for you to be able to sell, you know, as many copies as you possibly can. So think about it. There are going to be all these charts. There's going to be marketing. There's going to be hype. There's going to be all kinds of different informationals to put a video game out there in that window, I think is when the biggest amount of player bases usually come into the game. And then everything from then on is good. But then as people start to play the game, you're going to have different feelings. There are going to be people who get past the mark of where they can refund the game and then they get tired and they get, you know, in a sense, dissatisfied. There are going to be reviews that maybe a reviewer may not like the game, share their opinions. And then, you know, that could also affect other people. I mean, if we think about it, Scale Up did not like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but real Assassin's Creed fans, I'm talking the ones who appreciated the old school Assassin's Creed and the new school Assassin's Creed will tell you that they love Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So it's like two different worlds then you also had the assassin's creed crew from the old assassin's creed who do not like the new assassin's creed so it's kind of a mixture 
and then you have people who picked up the game just because it was a Viking game and they wanted to kind of engage with that. So looking at all of these, it makes a whole lot of sense for a company like Ubisoft to, in a sense, incentivize people to come into their ecosystem from time to time. And they're doing it with a division, which is, in my opinion, the appropriate game to do something like that. Because right now, a lot of players have said, we've played the game. We've beaten a lot of the content. The game is no longer, you know, interesting to us. And, you know, many of us put the game down for now, including myself. I've been playing Jedi Fallen Order. I'm trying to reach 100% and go for New Game Plus because I like playing my third-person adventure games, you know, when I'm not playing The Division. So I and many other community members are doing exactly the same thing. And meanwhile, Massive Ubisoft is looking well. While a lot of the player base is taking a hiatus, what do we? What, what can we do to continue to expand the player base, discount the game, bring more people into the ecosystem, allow for more people to have the opportunity to enjoy the division game? And this is exactly one of the best things that I think Ubisoft does as their business model to keep them profitable over time. You see, gaming is very competitive with the AAA companies, and they, in their own right, being a AAA company, have to do what you know they feel is necessary to keep them in that place. So that's why we're seeing the division as a, uh, a game that fluctuates in its price point and gets a lot of really, I would say, generous discounts. Now, here's the second side, and this is the side that we're going to throw out some hypotheses. This may not necessarily be 100% accurate, but if we remember the last huge big sale that happened in the beginning of the year, it was really close, though, to a, a Warlords of New York DLC. They went ahead and discounted the game to $3 and basically eventually announced that they were bringing out new DLC. And so right now, yes, it's no longer, it's not one of those $3 discounts. I mean, this is a Ubisoft store-wide discount thing going on. But it's really interesting that at the cusp of announcing all of these, you know, uh, all of these ventures that these gaming companies are going for, especially with massive Ubisoft announcing their Star Wars venture, it's quite interesting that they're actually discounting the division as of now, which is actually leading a lot of players to kind of presume much more that the division two may be having some future content coming down the road. I have to say, with everything that has happened this year, this past year, um, you know, it's starting to become much more of a reality as to how difficult it is to bring new games to the market. If everybody remembers, if I remember, ladies and gentlemen, February was when Outriders was supposed to come out and everybody said, we're going to go play Outriders and we're not going to play the division anymore. Well, guess what? It's one of those things where perhaps everything that's been going on has affected that game. And now we're left with kind of like that position where if Tom Clancy's The Division is, is one of the games that would announce new content. Almost all of us that are division agents will pick it up. Now, I know some of you are not going to pick it up. You're going to tell me in the comment section. I get it. I get it. You don't like the division anymore and all of that. But that's also fine. You know, there, there really isn't uh, kind of uh, a, a stronghold of the game on some players. But some of us were kind of beholden to a lot of what the game has brought. And even with the new announcement or whatever, whatever you want to call it of this game that has the last of us feel with the environment aspect of the division, I think it's starting to become much more of an an interesting take as to what the division is who knows maybe we're going to be seeing some dlc down the road who knows maybe this is going to be something that you know cascades into bringing more people into the community and the developers are able to perhaps just announce what their plans are for next year which we do suspect is a division three by the way but you know i don't think a division three is the best thing to announce right now if anything if they can craft together and crunch together and i say crunch in a good way i'm not saying crunch as an overwork themselves but if they can put together something really good for a year three, it will really set the groundwork for them to be able to announce a third game if they have that in mind. Because this is all about the business aspect and the marketing of things. You really have to make sure that your community is in the best spirits. I mean, I know that every game development company right now is appreciative of their community, is appreciative of their player base in a sense because their businesses we keep the doors open and I'm sure that they understand that, you know, yes, there might be limitations. Yes, there might have been mishaps along the way. But at the end of the day, if we don't patronize them, no one else will. And so we're going to see things actually take a very different turn in the coming few months. And you can you can count on that because the world is changing very fast. And if a business is not willing to actually adapt and move to that direction, they're going to be left behind. But I wanted to go ahead and say, if you enjoy, you know, buying games and picking them up on sale, the division is definitely one of them that's worth picking up on sale. You should definitely go ahead and get it. If you want to know if it's worth playing in 2020, 
and have another video to that effect. I'll link that in the comment section. That will tell you everything that so far had changed in the game. Uh, there's a new patch coming, so that video might have uh, a little shortage of information and details, but at least it will get you up to speed on if you should spend your hard earned, you know, eight, nine, ten dollars or twenty dollars on the game and its DLC. So thank you very much for listening to the video. I appreciate your time and audience. Hopefully we'll see in another video. Peace.